All right, so we are now moving toward um, different types of functions. Um, we've been focusing on quadratics for a while, and now we are going to look at inverse functions. So I've got the definition up here because the, they will definitely ask you at least one question about this definition on the quiz. So the definition for inverses is two functions, and you can name them anything. Here I picked g of x and f of x, but it could be any name. But two functions are inverses if and only if f of g of x, so I'm going to write out the words, equals x, and, and then that one would read g of f of x equals x. And what these are, are compositions, meaning that if I actually take one of the functions and plug it in place of the variable in the other function, what ends up happening is you just end up with x, which that sounds really confusing, but really what you need to see in this definition is that the original input, the very inside, because we know with order of operations, we always start inside parentheses, and here I have parentheses within parentheses. The big idea is that my original input is x, that's what I put in. Whatever f of x does to that, g of x undoes it, because I end up with exactly what I started with. So. A more simple way to think about it, which isn't the technical definition, but inverse functions are functions that undo each other, just like inverse operations undo each other. So another thing that's always true when we're talking about inverses is that the domain and range of inverse functions are switched. So whatever was the input in the original function becomes the output um, in the inverse function and vice versa. So it's like I'm switching the x and y. So x and y of inverse functions are switched. So one of the main things that you're going to be asked to do in this particular quiz is to actually find an inverse function or, you know, since many of them are multiple choice, correctly identify the inverse function. So I've written out four steps here, and for all of those types of equations, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to do these same four steps every time you're trying to find an inverse. Some of the questions will say, you know, which of the following is the inverse. Some of them will give you two functions in each choice and ask which pair are inverses. Regardless of the way they word it, we're going to use the same four steps every time. So first we're going to put y in place of the function notation. Then we're going to switch our x and y. Again, the reasoning for that is because the domain and range of inverse functions are switched. Then we're going to get y by itself. We're going to solve for y. And then we're going to put our inverse notation back in where our y is now. So got a couple examples. Again, these are going to really prepare you for the quiz. Should be pretty similar to what you're going to see for a lot of the questions. So here's a mapping diagram, and this is showing a function. We've named it, in this case, m of x. It then wants us to find the mapping diagram for m prime of x. This is notation for the inverse of m of x. So sometimes they'll give you the prime notation and sometimes they'll actually say the word inverse, but I just want to make sure that you know that those mean the same thing. So whenever we have these mapping diagrams, this is really just focusing in on this guy right here. We're going to switch the domain and range. So when I have a mapping diagram, the one that the arrow is pointing to is the output. The one where the arrow starts is the input. So we are going to switch for every input-output pair. We're just going to switch them. And so I'm still going to have four rows, if you will, 
of numbers, but what was the domain becomes the range and vice versa. So I had three going to two, now I'm gonna have two going to three. I had six going to four, so now four to six. Nine to six becomes six to nine. 12 to eight becomes eight to 12. And so if this were multiple choice, this is the answer you would be looking for. All right, example two, we've just got a bunch of different varieties of types of equations that we are gonna use these four steps right here for. So first one, I take the function notation out. So that means that f of x goes away and I put y in its place. That's all step one is. Step two, I'm gonna switch x and y. So what was y becomes x and vice versa. That's step two. Step three, solve for y using opposite operations. So I need to get y by itself. So this is just like when we did literal equations where we had more than one variable. So we're gonna subtract the five to get this to cancel out. Now when we do that, over on the left side, x and five are not like terms. That's fine. I just leave it x minus five equals six y. So y is still not by itself. Step three again says solve for y, so I need to get it entirely alone. So I still need to divide by six. That'll cancel this out. And so now y is by itself. So that means my last step is to put inverse notation in, in place of y. I'm also gonna put it on the left side. So inverse notation is the prime that we talked about up here. So because my original is f, capital F of x, this is gonna be capital F prime of x, and that's where the y would be, and then it'd be x minus five over six. Now, I also wanna make sure that you're aware that sometimes they might write things a little bit differently. So this might be an answer, or instead they might separate the pieces and divide each of these pieces by six. So it might read x over six minus five over six, which is equivalent. So you just have to make sure that you don't panic and think you did something wrong because your answer isn't there. Make sure and look to see if there's maybe an equivalent form of what you wrote. All right, so B, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I've got r of x equals seven x minus four all divided by five. So I'm gonna put my y in place of my function notation, so that means take the r of x out, put y in instead. Now step two, I'm gonna switch the x with the y. So x equals seven y minus four over five. Now, because of the format that this is in, you could separate it like I did from here to here if you wanted. I think that the easiest way to deal with this is actually just to get rid of this entire denominator. Right now, that's a divided five, so the opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm gonna get rid of it with the opposite operation multiplication, multiply both sides by five. Those will go away. Five times x is just five x. So equals seven y minus four. Y is still not alone, so next I'm gonna add four to cancel these out. Now again, these are not like terms, and that's okay, just leave it, five x plus four. That equals seven y. So now divide both sides by seven to cancel this. Y is now by itself, so inverse notation capital R prime of X is equal to 5X plus 4 over 7 or 5 over 7X plus 4 over 7 would also be an acceptable answer. So, I'm sure they might give you some of each. Um, typically, I let students leave it like the first one because um, I don't really think that the separation is necessary, but I just want you to be aware in case if 
it's one of the choices on the multiple choice. All right, so now let's look at our last one. Again, same steps, it's just a different setup of the function. Here we've got the variable in the denominator. So again, same four steps every time. First, I'm gonna put y in place of the function notation. So y equals eight over x minus 15. Then I'm gonna switch the x and the y. Notice that that's the only thing I change when I switch them. I leave everything else the same. Now I need to get y alone. So y is on the bottom over here. I need to move this 15 first. So add 15 to both sides to get rid of those. Again, left side, not like terms. Just leave it x plus 15 equals 8 over y. Now, I wanted to do one of these because when the variable is in the denominator, that's sometimes a tricky situation. Um, when it's by itself, what we really just want to do is what I uh, like to call the old western switcheroo. If you have a variable by itself in the denominator, the old western switcheroo says that you can switch it with whatever is on the other side of the equals. So old western switcheroo here is just going to switch these two things with each other. So that's going to give me y equals 8 over x plus 15. Which then, when I go to put in my function notation, be capital G prime of x equals 8 over x plus 15. Now, I want to show you why that works. Um, I'd really, it'd be a lot easier for you if you remember the old Western switcheroo, but I want to show you why that works in case you forget it. If you want to undo division by y, technically what we would be doing, and let me, I'm going to write it up here to illustrate it for you. Technically, we would need to multiply both sides by y. And when I do that, I would have y times x plus 15 equals 8. And so then if I want, if my objective is to get y alone, I wouldn't want to distribute it. That puts y on everything. So we would then, these are multiplied together. We would then be dividing both sides by the x plus 15 to get that y by itself. So you see we get the same answer, but the old western switcheroo does it in one step as opposed to having to use two steps. So I think that that makes it easier. This one, the answer is how the answer is gonna be written. You don't separate like we did in A and B when the two term part is in the denominator. You cannot separate that into the two little pieces. So we'll leave it eight over x plus 15. So hopefully that helps you feel confident with your inverse functions. Make sure that you ask if you need help and or have questions.